Hey guys, I'm Sun. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. Um, a few episodes back, I explained why I believe Firefox is the best browser for privacy and I showed you guys how I like to configure my Firefox settings to make sure I have as much privacy and security as possible. Um, what I didn't mention back then is that was episode one of two on configuring Firefox. There's a bunch of more advanced features that uh, we'll discuss in a future episode. If you're into that, smash the subscribe button and we'll get there. That being said, even with the settings that we enabled, <clears throat> sorry about that, um, you can still run into websites that will be broken. And uh, a friend of mine actually reached out after following the guide and said, son, some websites I go on are now broken. What can I do about it? And I explained that if the websites were broken with these settings, chances are the website in question was using shitty uh, practices when it comes to user privacy. Um, and he then said, well, what if I still want to access that website? Should I do that in Safari or Chrome? And I said, well, no, you should do it in Firefox. And he asked, well, is there a, a way to have two separate Firefox instances running at the same time? One that I like uh, with really strict settings and one that is not as strict. Uh, and I said, you know what? There is. It's a bit of a hacker thing, but there is a way of doing that. And this is the subject of this episode. I'm going to teach you guys how to run multiple Firefox profiles at the same time in two separate windows. And the way Firefox implements profiles is quite different than the way it's implemented in Chrome. Uh, in Chrome, profiles are essentially containers for your cookies and website data meaning all of your Chrome uh, settings and extensions are shared among profiles. At least that's how it was last time I used Chrome. I've switched to Firefox a long time ago. The way Firefox does it is a bit quirkier. Um, and it so happens that it's good for us when we're craving even more privacy and security out of our browsers. Whew. Okay, so the way Firefox implements profiles is the profile includes the app settings and extensions, it, meaning it essentially means you're running two separate Firefox instances side by side or more than two if you want to go bananas. And that's quite amazing. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this. And I'm quite excited, actually, that this is the first episode where we're going to be using the terminal. And the terminal is a way for you to interact with your operating system at a lower level. That's what hackers do in movies when you see them see them popping up the terminal. So you see those windows here. Um, if your terminal is not in your dock, uh, you can find it by using uh, Spotlight and you just have to write terminal and there it is. Okay, uh, so as we can see, this is a Firefox instance. It's the default one. If we go in Firefox and we look at the preferences, uh, we'll see in privacy and security that it's using pretty much the strictest possible uh, settings that you can use. And that's what I recommend. If you haven't seen that video I mentioned on Firefox, I'll link it in the description. <clears throat> but what if we want to have a separate instance for work, for instance, and we want that instance Whoa, I'm abusing the word instance here. Whew. If you want to have a separate profile for work and you want that profile to be a little uh, less strict, how can you do that? Well, here's how. Uh, I created a little gist on GitHub with some command lines that we're going to be running here. I'll link that in the description. So the first thing we want to do is paste this here and press enter. And that's going to pop up uh, that little window where we get to create another profile. So we're going to create a profile and we're going to call it work. Once this is done and we hit done, uh, that window here is going to ask us, you know, by default, uh, which of these do you want to start? Uh, we're going to start uh, this one by default, which is the default. Um, a thing I like to do to be able to know which is which you know, because by default, you know, both profiles will look the same is choose a different template, uh, template theme, Jesus. Uh, so how do we go about doing that? If you click here and you go in add ons and you go in themes, um, I like one that is called arc dark theme enter. And this is the one here. So if you click on there and you say install theme, add boom. 
uh, got it. And now, as you can see, it's pretty clear, given that dark gray bar on top, that we're in the default. Um, if we want to open the other one, uh, and we use this little command line here, and we paste it there, and we press Enter, uh, you'll see that it, it looks exactly the same as when we actually opened Firefox for the first time. So it's using all of the defaults. If we go in Firefox Preferences uh, and look at Privacy and Security, you'll see that it's on the standard mode. So therefore, that is a completely separate Firefox instance uh, than this. Now, more advanced hackers will say, well, it's using the same memory, so you could have uh, someone could try to hack you from one of the instances to another. Yes, this is more in the context of your identity of uh, having, for instance, uh, Google uh, working in your work uh, profile, but not having any exposure to Google and its trackers uh, in the context of your personal, more secure one. Um, now, obviously, Google has trackers all over the place, but we're blocking them using this and using Privacy Badger. Um, what was that? Oh, okay. And using Privacy Badger. So, um, I guess if you guys want to use this like every day, uh, using the terminal is a bit quirky, uh, but there is an alternative that I like. Uh, if you go ahead and open Automator uh, and you go in... Uh, file, new, then we can create a new application. And you want to find here uh, script, run shell script, you want to drag this here, and you want to take that line, woo, going back here, you want to take that same line that we pasted in the terminal, and paste it here. And once we hit run, I'll just close this here first. Uh, once we hit run, uh, it will essentially uh, automate the process of opening the terminal and running that command so I can close that window here and we can save this. I'll save it to the desktop and I'm going to call it Firefox work. Oh, actually here, work, um, save. Now we can close Automator and we can close uh, Firefox and we can close the terminal. Um, now this is great, uh, but this here is uh, not the icon that we would want for Firefox. So there is a way to use the same icon as Firefox. You just open Finder. Whoops, let me arrange things here a bit. And if you right click on Firefox here and go and get info, um, okay. You can then go in Applications, right click on Firefox, Show Package Content, double click on Contents, double click on Resources, and that's our beloved icon. I have it as a sticker on my Mac. I love Firefox. Thanks guys for such amazing work. You just drag this here and we're done. Now we want to take that Firefox thing. We can close this. We want to take it and we, ooh, sorry. That almost blew up here. You want to put it beside the Firefox uh, original app and drag this here to your, um, what's this called already? Damn it. Give me a second. Options doc. Whew. So if we close the Firefox instance here, uh, what we'll see now is if we click on Firefox, it will open you know, our default browser. Uh, and if we click on Firefox work, it's gonna spawn a new ephemeral uh, instance of that Firefox work profile. Uh, and that is great. It means that you now get to use separate extensions in each um, and you can compartmentalize things even better than using uh, containers. Uh, I mentioned that using the containers extension is a really great way to compartmentalize Facebook and Google. If you have to use Facebook or Google, that's a great way to force those websites to only operate within the context of the container. But sometimes you have multiple Google accounts that you need access to. And that really doesn't work so well where, when you're in the context of a container because they're all going to open uh, in the same container. It means you cannot have a separate container for you know, your work Google and your personal Google if you're a Google user. That's where uh, using separate Firefox instances works great because each one can be linked to only one Google account. So when you open a Google Doc or whatever, you don't have to switch from one um, Google account to the other. And another great reason for using this is 
Uh, say you have a Reddit account for work and a personal Reddit account. Well, Reddit, I don't think Reddit has a way to switch from one account to the other. So you can essentially use your personal um, instance or profile for your personal Reddit and then log into your work Reddit on this work profile. And that's pretty great. Uh, by the way, I've been using instance and profile, uh, you know, on and off and they're essentially the same. So sorry about that. If you're a little confused, so am I. <sighs> okay. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I hope that was helpful. Um, there is one other really amazing thing you can do with Firefox profiles, and that is to link each profile to its own proxy. My VPN, uh, and that will be the subject of another episode in the future. If you're into VPNs, smash the subscribe button and we'll get there. But in the meantime, my VPN terminates somewhere in the world. And a lot of websites are not so happy when I visit them because they think I'm a hacker or something. Uh, one of these is like Home Depot. So a way to mitigate that is I have a separate profile that is using a proxy and the proxy is terminating in Canada. So when I'm visiting homedepot.ca, it sees I'm visiting from Canada and it's all happy with it. Um, so using proxies in the context of containers to link your container identity, your profile identity to a specific IP that's on a proxy, that's mind blowing. It means you can have two separate Firefox instances with two separate IPs. It really helps you compartmentalize your identity. If you're into that stuff, smash the subscribe button. And I have to drop here that that does not replace using Tor. If you really need to be as anonymous as possible, uh, Tor is still the way to go. And that will be yet again the subject of another episode. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you soon.